Matt here. Hope you're doing well. God is good. It's going to be a great year. I thought with this video I'd just kind of do some random things. Talk about different subjects that people ask me a lot of questions about. Uh, maybe give you a few guitar tips. And at the end go over a devotion about controlling your thoughts. Um, so let's just dive into it here. Uh, as you know I teach guitar, piano lessons on, uh, on uh, here on YouTube. Uh, one of the questions I get asked most is, why does my guitar not sound like yours? I've watched the Praise in 10 Days DVD, but it still doesn't quite sound like yours. What I recommend, I tell people, is make sure your guitar is in tune. I use, um, if you can see here, this um, Quick Tune, and I also have a guitar tune app on my iPhone that I use. But, uh, you know, you just go down each string, and I find... You know, until the green light comes on. Um, it's right there. I'm a little low. Uh, it makes, so make sure your guitar is in tune. That's the first thing I would tell a beginner. Okay, the second thing I would do, tip, is when you're forming your chords, make sure you're picking down each string to ensure that you're not hitting unwanted strings. So if I'm going to do a G chord, first strum, and see if you like the sound. It sounds pretty clear. If it does, Pick down each string. So you can see that it sounds clear. When you start out, it's probably going to sound something like this. You have dead strings here and there because what's happening to your string, your fingers are hitting unwanted strings. So you have to move your hand up and down, closer to the fret bars, things like that, to get the good. Good clear sound. So that's one thing. Another, and I think um, many guitars, even though the strings are in tune the same, can sound very different. I have a Washburn guitar, the one you've seen on maybe my earlier videos that did not have the cutout. Uh, sounds very different than this. Uh, this is a Taylor 614 CE. It's a Christmas present. I love it. It has a, has a really good sound, uh, better than even the camera shows um, in person. Um, it has a very clear sound. Some guitars have a lower sound, some a higher, some... Uh, as far as the strings, I use Elixir strings, um, but they're all different kinds, it's kind of whatever you prefer. Um, so that might be something you want to look into also. But make sure, another tip I, I tell a lot of people, people will write me and say, well, I'm about to start your lessons, start guitar lessons, what kind of guitar should I buy? And the advice I always give is just make sure you play the guitar before you buy it. Uh, you'll see those kind like in a Walmart or Target that are in a box and you want to stay away from those. Go to a Guitar Center, a Sam Ash, uh, even Craigslist and make sure you can sit down and feel the width of the guitar against your body, how it sits on your leg, how the, um, the, the frets, the, the, how it feels playing, how it feels picking down the strings how's the sound to you um, you might even want to get if you're totally starting out maybe get someone to help you out that doesn't have uh, ulterior motives like the sales rep in the guitar center or something get somebody to go in there with you if you know someone plays guitar if you do not have somebody like that still go in but just make sure you play it to uh, get the feel of the guitar you want Another question I get asked a lot, how should I be practicing? And this is kind of a, um, you can answer it a number of different ways, but what I like to do is take a few chords. If you've seen my lessons, you know I use the C, G, D, E minor for the most part. I would really work on mastering a few chords before I work so much on getting this big chord bank and getting all bar chords and all kinds of things like that, all this fancy picking. Because that's getting more advanced. You want to just get the basics down, particularly if you're trying to lead worship. Uh, again, you can use those same four, four chords and play so many songs. And then what happens is I go um, C, G, D, E minor. And I stand So there's that. If it doesn't sound right for your voice, try putting the capo in different places. That's what this is used for. You can use that those same four chords. 
relative to the capo. So um, there's that. People ask me a lot of times, what are you doing with the D chord? Because on the four chords, C, G, a lot of times I'll leave these two fingers planted on the bottom, but you'll see me do the... What I'm doing is just walking in and out with that middle finger and pinky finger on that D chord. So it's kind of... That's a great practice drill, is work on just making a whole song with just that D chord. You can hammer on that third string. Again, that's a little more advanced, but it's something that's a great exercise for you to work on. Uh, another question. What are you doing pulling this first finger on and off while you play your C chord? Um, what that is, I've shown another video, it's called a hammer-on. Gives you two sounds with one chord. Does that make sense? You really want to work, after you get more advanced and you start getting really good at the chord changes, work on moving your fingers around. Another tip I would, I would recommend people after you've got strumming down, uh, strumming is a topic in itself. I, by far I get the most questions about strumming and I tell everybody type in Matt McCoy strumming and we'll go through those videos because it's not about the down, down up, down up switch, down up, down up, it's about timing. It's that timing and spacing between chords. You want that timing, that kind of internal Three, four, one, two, three, going on. So as long as the internal clock's kind of going, you help with strumming. It takes time to start with just down strums and then get more advanced. Uh, the last tip I'll give is work on raising the key of a song. Uh, I went over that in other videos, but uh, if you're playing that, so that's C, G, D, E minor. Work on, um, I go over that a little bit in Matt McCoy voice lessons or Matt McCoy transposing chords, and I'll put some links up here. But um, so the C becomes a D because you're raising that, that would be two half steps or one whole step. A C sharp is a half step, one whole step is a D. So C becomes a D. A G would be a G sharp into an A. So, and you know, the uh, the D would become an E, D sharp, um, and then an E, and then that E minor chord here would come like a, I'll play like a F minor there. So there's your few tips to work on. I hope that answers some of your questions. Uh, the last question is about responding. Some people I think are kind of surprised when I respond. If they go to AcousticSelection.com and they write me, they'll tell me their story or something going on in their life and I'll write them back the next day. And a lot of people will write them, man, I'm surprised you wrote back. Um, God is my witness. I might have missed a few of you all, but I, I try to write back every single person that writes me. So when I go to my job in the mornings, usually 
after we have an initial meeting with my staff at the office, um, I'll go in the office and write back every single person. If it's a comment, I'll write a thank you and an appreciate the encouragement. If it's a question, I'll try to answer it. If it's an email. So if you guys got something on your mind, shoot me a message and I'll be sure to um, get back with you with the, within at least two to three days. So know that uh, if you if you want to write me for sure. To end, I like to do a devotional. I've gotten I received great feedback about that, about you all appreciating the devotionals for the New Year's. Um, I want to talk about our thoughts. Uh, our thoughts are so important. And I was reading my um, morning devotional. I'm doing a devotional right now because, called, it's on you version on the iPad, called Rethink Life. Uh, I recommend that. Re, they're very short, but I start the day out with this Rethink Life. And it goes over in 40 days how we can rethink um, how we view life and kind of reprogram our mind. And I want, I want to talk to you about this verse here. Philippians 4, chapter 8, it says, Finally, brethren, this is Paul talking here, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there's any virtue, if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. And that's what I want to ask you guys out there today. What are you thinking about when you wake up in the morning? What comes in your mind? When you, what you, so you think of something when you open your eyes. Is it how busy your day is going to be? Is it um, what you're going to do this weekend? What you're going to do at night? Uh, what you're going to eat for breakfast? What are you thinking about in the morning? When you, In your work day, what are you thinking about? When you're at school, what are you thinking about? Uh, in the afternoons, uh, when you're in church, when you're out of church, when you're around um, your spouse, or your girlfriend or boyfriend, or your brother or sister, what is going on in your mind? Is it Things that are true and are noble and just and pure, lovely, good report. Because Satan, he is the master deceiver. Um, one thing I, you know, just finished the Alabama um, Notre Dame game, which that's a subject in itself. But um, we we often, in, like in sports, we'll study, we'll work on our game plan, but at the same time, you're watching film. And, and doing studies on the opponent's game plan. And I would encourage you as a believer, not only look at what God wants for your life, understand what Satan wants for your life and study his ways. Because my dad says, uh, I hear him say often, Satan just has a few tools and it's so true, but he uses them over and over and over again to try to destroy our lives. He's the master deceiver. That if you can know one thing about Satan, he is here to distort and deceive your mind. That, that's what he's, he's trying to program your mind to think of things away from God, to turn your, turn your past away from God and get caught up. And that's how you see these uh, mass sh gun shootings and these, um, whether it's abortion, whether it's um, uh, people just walking out on their spouse. It's Satan wants us to deceive us from God's ways. So I want to leave you. Um, we're talking about controlling your thoughts. I'll leave you with one thing that my dad talked to me about that has had such an impact in my life because I said, I understand you want to control your thoughts, but sometimes I just can't, just random things, whether it's lust, whether it's jealousy, envy, just come to my mind. How do you handle that? My dad said, Proverbs 16.3, commit your works unto the Lord and your thoughts will be established. Commit your works unto the Lord and your thoughts will be established. Proverbs 16.3. Now, salvation, let me get this straight, is not a works-based thing. It is Ephesians uh, chapter 2, I think, verse 8 says, Salvation is um, by grace through faith. It is a gift of God, not of yourselves, not of works, lest anyone should boast. It is absolutely our salvation comes from the cross and God's grace. Let's get that straight. But to control your thoughts, how God wants them, it's all about committing your works to Him. If you commit your works to God then you're going to be thinking about the things that are pure and true and holy and just, like um, Philippians says. Thank you, guys. Have a great day. And I'm going to leave you with my favorite Bible verse, John 10, 10. Christ came that we may have life and have it more abundantly. We're not just living this Christian life so that one day we get in heaven and get rewards. Let's live it up now. Today is the day of salvation. Live that abundant life. Have a great day. and God bless you.